Hello and welcome to this first of a kind program with our partners at Brooks Running. My name is Caroline Fitzgerald and I am the Vice President of Partnerships and Runner Experience at P3R. And today we are going behind the scenes of the development and the creation of the official shoe of the 2021 Dick Sporting Goods Pittsburgh Marathon, which is the Pittsburgh Launch 8 from Brooks. So to start, I would like to introduce two very special guests uh, from Brooks that are, are joining us today. So first we have Sydney Sanders, who's the event marketing specialist at Brooks Running, who heads up our partnership with uh, Brooks and P3R. So welcome, Sydney. Hi, Caroline. Um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, at, our goal at Brooks is to reach runners when and where they're running. So P3R is a great partner for us to do that with. Um, we've always been really impressed by the quality of your races and how you engage with your community. Um, so this partnership is really important to us. Well, it's very important to us too, Sydney, and it's been so many years of great partnership and I really, really appreciate you being here and, and for making this whole program happen today. So thank you. Um, so we are also joined today um, by another very special guest, Noelle Webster, who is a color and trend designer at Brooks Running. And Noelle is the designer behind the 2021 edition of the Pittsburgh launches. So welcome, Noelle. Ah, thanks so much for having me. It's so nice to chat with you all and kind of talk through this really exciting opportunity. It was so fun to try and capture this really unique city's uh, personality. <laughs> um, so it's really unmatched. So uh, really, thanks so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you did amazing work and the shoes are out now. So we're recording this video a couple of days after the shoes officially launched um, at Dick Sporting Goods online and through the area. So um, they're amazing and, and we're excited to chat more. So before we jump in, um, I would just on a personal note like to say how excited I am to be here today. So I'm a lifelong Pittsburgher and a runner. Um, you can see the PGH on the wall behind me. So the Pittsburgh launches are always the highlight truly of my entire year. Um, and I know I'm not alone in that. Uh, every time I know that I go for a run, I see somebody wearing the Pittsburgh shoes. Um, anytime I go to the grocery store, somebody's wearing them. Um, and this year is, particular, is particularly special because this is the fifth year that we've created this shoe in partnership with Brooks um, and Dick Sporting Goods. So uh, to kick things off, Sydney, I'd like to start with um, kicking it to you to hear a little bit more about the history of our partnership and how the shoe came to be in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when we initially signed a partnership agreement with P3R in 2017, um, all parties, so P3R, Dick Sporting Goods, and Brooks, were really excited about the idea of a Pittsburgh shoe. Um, with D DSG as the title sponsor, it just seemed like a natural way to celebrate the partnership and create a super unique and super custom product for the Pittsburgh running community. Um, we've released a new iteration every year since then, um, five in total, um, and all have been received with a lot of excitement. You can see them here. They are the best, and I love this year's design over the years. I am that person that has each shoe in the original box <laughs> here. They just keep get, getting better and better. Um, but again, the 2021 is really, really special. So Noel, I'll say it again. I'm going to sing your praises a thousand times today <laughs> as we talk, but you really did an incredible job. Um, the design is amazing. And the response from the, the Pittsburgh running community has been so strong. Uh, the day of the launch, I called the Dick Sporting Goods by my house. Uh, or the, I'm sorry, the day before the launch, I called the Dick Sporting Goods by my house and it was like 9.30 in the morning. And the person I spoke with at Dick's Sporting Goods said I was the sixth person to call that morning to see if the shoes were available yet. So people are just so excited. Um, so I'd love to the, hear you talk about the design process. Let's go behind the scenes um, and hear about how this amazing shoe came to be. 
Yeah, let's go behind the scenes, uh, beyond the terrible towel <laughs> concepts. Uh, every year it's kind of a, a journey, an 18 month saga. So this all started in fall of 2019, the concept for this when the world was a little bit more different, uh, uh, maybe more normal. Um, but a lot of this starts off in preliminary concept stages where we kind of evaluate what are the needs of a specific project. So often that's regional flair and inspirational imagery. So in Pittsburgh, um, we kind of dissected it into a mood board. Um, and then that leads to discussions with our partners and how different elements need to be incorporated, um, print and graphic plays. So this year was definitely graphic heavy. So leaning into that, um, but also where our core color palettes will uh, reside and how we want to take materials um, if we want to bring in specialty effects and uh, kind of uh, how we have to trial and development process those uh, to ensure they're up to our high standards that Brooks running. So they look cute, but they also perform. <laughs> um, but all this is to say we can start a lot of different ways. <laughs> and we definitely took a couple routes to where we landed uh, for this final product. Uh, we explore, innovate. It's a lot of play um, and it's a lot of fun, especially for Pittsburgh. So um, I think as this year was so apparent, we really focused in on the Pittsburgh landscape and interpreting that in a new and fresh way for this fifth year. Um, it's an iteration of this event shoe that we want to bring in a new audience uh, and also retain those who buy it every year, Caroline, <laughs> but uh, also excite some new folks to get excited. Um, yeah, can chat through where we kind of started off here. <laughs> Yeah, and this this one, I'm just gonna keep this slide up for a second. This yeah. is definitely like the most literal of all of them. Like this, like Pittsburgh is illustrated directly on this view. I think it's just tremendous. Yeah, it's super interesting how every year we kind of take a different angle. So I, I think uh, going through the different sample rounds of this year, uh, we kind of honed in where we wanted to strategize. So we started off here with this really graphic grid view, which was interesting, modern, abstract, but kind of lacked the personality that uh, really drives the city, um, the spirit. Um, so thought we could do better. So we, we went uh, another round um, where we kind of played through bridges. <laughs> Y'all have a lot of them. <laughs> so uh, kind of leaning into that focus, uh, but that still lacks some personality. So we crossed that bridge uh, and kept moving. <laughs> um, and throughout this sort of uh, next cityscape, we kind of uh, went a little bit more person personalized uh, to the start and finish line, uh, what that kind of skyline looks like uh, and articulated to the very layout of the flat of the shoe. So it's uh, fun to think about what a deconstructed shoe looks like um, in a very literal approach, um, but kind of having the Point State Park and that fountain um, really be at the focal point of the shoe um, and how the Brooks Path, uh, which mimics the course of a run, which seen on our, our fun little sweatshirt uh, garb as well. Um, you can see how that spotlights the skyline. Um, so even more fitting to this very special race uh, to spotlight it. <laughs> yeah, I love So I'm going to go back. I want to hear more about the Brooks Path because this just blew my mind. And I love the way that you have incorporated the Brooks logo and the path into the design. So I'm going to scroll back. So this, the Brooks Path is the logo. So Noel, can you talk a little bit about the path and what it represents, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so we have our logo mark that's very distinct, um, kind of thinking about it as a course of a run, um, your journey per se. Um, so very fitting for this particular race to have that kind of emphasized because 26.2 miles, nothing to uh, not write home about. So I think really uh, embracing uh, that kind of distinct motion is a really fun uh, kind of capstone <laughs> per se uh, that gets highlighted, especially when we have this literal approach of skyline and course of the race. <laughs> Absolutely, it's like you're literally running through the city of Pittsburgh on this shoe. The path is taking you through the cityscape in downtown Pittsburgh, which is captured so beautifully on the shoe is where the start line and the finish line are located for the yeah. race. So to me, I. I just love the symbolism of this. I think it is so special. 
it, it definitely brought me back. I, I know I'm, I'm from the East Coast, so on my road trips down the coastline, I'd always have a little sketchbook and I'd have like these little drawings and it's really fun to see it kind of like come to life um, per se. And uh, yeah, Pittsburgh is uh, no different. I feel like all the different uh, kind of unique and distinct forms of buildings, it's fun to capture with little doodle marks uh, come into life. <laughs> but you get to wear a two, which is pretty fun. Absolutely. Did I just see you hold up like the flat? Yeah. Um, so this is so one of our uh, kind of colored uh, trials. So we up the black from uh, this distinct trial, but um, yeah, this is what your shoe looks like uh, deconstructed a bit till it kind of gets reformatted <laughs> to the final product. Uh, so it's definitely a little glimpse into how we evaluate color and uh reel it in <laughs> absolutely that's really cool and so what we see here is like that the sketch process so do you start by doing it like on like how's your did you start in your notebook and your doodles and then did you take it and scan it onto the computer like how how did that work um in this new digital age i am such a procreate ipad fan fan <laughs> so that's kind of my new sketchbook which is interesting um but i always kind of think about the layout of a shoe um and how it's kind of horizontally positioned especially when um, a lot of the elements of the shoe on certain designs uh in the launch in particular uh, you don't have as much 3d print to worry about but you do have the one uh, logo mark the path to kind of consider uh just to make sure nothing gets obscured or um so there's definitely elements of this that are kind of in the background uh, when you're drawing, uh, making sure you're not putting the focal point in an area that's going to get covered. Um, the angle of Pittsburgh, <laughs> just making sure that TPU element doesn't uh, block the text in any of our sizes. Uh, we have to uh, assume for all the ranges of shoe sizes, so there's a little bit of finessing uh, to make sure. I think we started to lose the P in one of our sample rounds, so <laughs> uh, yeah, we definitely tweak things uh, to let it uh, work for all sizes, which sometimes takes a little bit of finessing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I, like the smallest size offering, I, I don't even, I know, don't know what it is off the top of my head, but in the women's um, run, it's definitely a lot different than the largest size option in the men's option. There's a lot of fabric difference between those two shoes. I would imagine that's a challenge to try to design for both of those. Yeah, I we do a lot of different uh, means of creation for print and pattern on shoes, but this one in particular is engineered for the shoe itself. Um, it's not an all over repeat, so got to uh, break out my math brain, which hasn't been um, in full function for a bit, but it, it definitely makes you uh, really think about how you place things and be thoughtful. So uh, yeah, it's a fun challenge. Uh, puzzles and pandemic. Uh, designing footwear in pandemic it's kind of all the same <laughs> just figuring out we're all just doing the best we can um yeah. so I, i'm going to show the next um slide which is some of the the um design and the startups for the white shoes so this year i guess i should admit there's a an offering for the for women and then there's an offering for men so we have um a white shoe um for for women and then a, a black shoe um that's designed for men. So I'd love to hear more about how does that work when you know you're designing like the same design on different colors, like yeah. through that process. Um, so it's actually funny. Um, the design is a lot of lines, as you can see. So um, having that interpreted on a dark ground or a white ground, um, it's really different how the dye stuffs are accepted into the material. So it's actually everything was uh, kind of uh, kind of articulated a little bit differently for the darker ground, uh, assuming the dye stuffs would bleed in and muddle the graphic more. So um, kind of being aware of what color choices and approaches were going about. Um, there's definitely a lot of trial and error. <laughs> we'll own that fact, but to have them read similar enough, um, and even though you'd like to think they'd be just one to one, uh, lots of Lots of judging. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine how, I should ask this at the beginning, how long does this design process take from start to finish? Like, when did you start working on the design? Yeah. Of the shoes? It's definitely um, 
it's a it's a full full cycle um, of shoes it, without any rushing. It should be 18 months, but sometimes we get some uh, feedback and we have to rejigger um, how we kind of uh, want to approach things. But so I'd say back in September thereabouts, we started the concept mood board stages, and it takes um, a couple weeks to be able to receive samples in um, for just basic parts um, and full. Uh, footwear builds take a little bit longer, so always being thoughtful with that approach to ensure uh, we're we're getting things that are worthwhile <laughs> to share out. Especially when we have such great partnerships, we want to make our um, friends proud <laughs> of their city. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot of um, development that is behind the scenes uh, that oddly takes us amount of time, but we're here, <laughs> which is exciting. Um, yeah, fun to see it out in the wild on Instagram and the like. Um, yeah, I always check. I'm like, wow, so fun. I to see people across the country just rocking and rolling. <laughs> I bet. I mean, I, it's so amazing it, for it to work on something for so long and then to see it, it physically come to life and now you can hold the actual shoe in your hand. It has to be like such a proud moment. I mean, I'm proud of it and I didn't create it. <laughs> so it's just amazing. Yeah, no, it's fun. I feel like very few people get to say their dream job is getting to doodle and I'm here and doing it. So it's really, I, I feel so lucky. This team is incredible. Um, yeah, just getting to work with so many talented and kind humans <laughs> every day makes uh, this job even more fun. Absolutely. And I know I know the only shoe that you work on is not the Pittsburgh shoe. I know you work on other shoes as well. Are you able yeah. to, to tell us a little bit about other, other designs you've worked on in the past? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I tend to have my specialty be uh, on specialty events and kind of these specialty collections. So a lot of print and pattern um, are my general wheelhouse. Um, so. Uh, Run Lucky this past year was a fun one to work on, getting the kind of bright, colorful tartan plaid um, and Girl in Sport um, International Women's Day. Um, those are continuing to be uh, really fun projects to work on, uh, really a great community space. So um, yeah, I, I can wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's some fun stuff on the horizon, but uh, truly Pittsburgh is at the top of the list. So <laughs> glad to be here to share. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you've done amazing work on a bunch of different. I own a lot. I will. I own. I think all of the shoes that you've designed. Now that you listen, <laughs> oh, big fan of your work on multiple levels. Um, so fun. Gosh, <laughs> so much. It's just so much fun. I, as far as like the design process, what's what's your favorite part of the process? Like, do you have a favorite part that? Yeah. I feel like once we kind of nail where the concept is heading, uh, that sort of iterative design uh, drawing phase where I'm kind of drawing these motifs, whether it's the buildings and kind of uh, formatting them. I like that kind of noggin work where I'm like, okay, how can that fit in the youth throat of the shoe? Um, just really taking those considerations into place because um, it's, I think, a pretty magical process to see where a mood board uh, starts and then what the actual product ends up looking like. Uh, so I think that big reveal stage is always really fun, especially when we're talking to folks on our team. It's such a, it's a teamwork. Our, uh, yeah, our product developers are incredible and help us bring these uh, design ideas to life. So yeah, it's, I, I would totally uh, love to say I get to draw all the time, but uh, <laughs> that is not always the case. But when I do get to draw, that's my favorite part. <laughs> Yeah, well, that makes sense. Clearly, you are very good at it and you have a knack for it. Um, what was it like, like, we're trying to fit the skyline into the space on the shoe? Like, how many takes did it take you or tries to try to, like, because it looks like it fits perfectly, like, the peak of the skyline comes right in the peak of the shoe there. Like, how long or how many tries do you think it took you to get it to where it is? 
I mean, I will give y'all some credit. Your skyline is very adaptable <laughs> for our layout of our shoe. Um, yes. <laughs> but it, it definitely, it took some adjustments. Um, I feel like it's always funny trying to squeeze everything you want into a shoe. Um, yeah, I, grab bag style doesn't always work. So I think it's almost uh, reducing the amount of elements was more so. Uh, I tend to almost draw in a format that's uh, choose your own adventure, uh, where there are different elements that I can almost kind of collage in. Um, and I didn't get to use a lot of my bridges and elements like that. So <laughs> I think uh, just knowing when to stop is an important rule of thumb. <laughs> and I sometimes have to check myself. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I probably had some critters, some people walking dogs. Yeah, uh, things were minimized. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so definitely Skyline was approached uh, pretty, pretty formulaic to how it's actually uh, exists to my understanding. But uh, yeah, your city fits great on a shoe. So maybe we keep it up. <laughs> it look, I mean, it does fit really well. And I love that you put, and I'm going to scroll to this image, Point State Park um, in the fountain, which is the fountain right at the confluence of the three rivers where the Allegheny River and the Monongahela River hit together to then form the, the Ohio. And to me, looking at this, it's like, kind of looks like we have like the side of the city by the Allegheny River and the side of the city by the Monongahela River and then it all comes together right at the toe point at the point itself and again it just it's so great because it's a literal interpretation of Pittsburgh it feels so spot on yeah no it I feel like especially quarantine COVID era I, uh, visiting your city via Google Images and Google Street View was very fun. I'm like, does that make sense? So really reorienting myself since it's been a little bit since I've been in your city. So uh, uh, yeah, I think it's great to draw inspiration and uh, try and sort out where those actual landmarks are because I know so many people uh, who are outsiders to cities kind of make those broad assumptions. So glad it, it landed okay. <laughs> You did your homework for sure. And as soon as it is safe to do so, you will have to come back and visit Pittsburgh and, and see your shoe in real life. <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny. Folks on my team always try and push for very food centric concepts. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of homework to be done there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I think there's some def definite options that we could explore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pierogies, oh, salad with French fries. Yeah, lots of, yeah, <laughs> got some questions, but I'm here for answers too. <laughs> I am here to talk about Pittsburgh food all day long and the intersection of Pittsburgh, shoe, Pittsburgh food becoming shoes. So I'm happy to yeah. serve the customer insights team for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, here to trial and error any any food samplings here to be inspired. So yeah, I'll take notes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so great. Um, so we're, before we, I have a couple like closing questions for both you and Sydney. I have some questions for you too, Sydney. But before we wrap up, Noelle, is there anything else you'd like to share about the design and the process um, and how this shoe came to be? Well, I think it's really fun to hear feedback from folks who live there and like, again, emphasizing on social, like seeing what uh, people post about and what they care about is always so impactful. Um, we take that feedback to heart, <laughs> the color and trend team, we really try and make runners happy and uh, how they um, receive the shoes and the design. So yeah, post pics, uh, we love to see these shoes in action um, and feedback so we can keep making shoes that y'all wanna wear. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, the feedback is coming in and it's strongly positive, but we will collect it all and <laughs> share it with you. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now um, for our last couple questions that we have. So this is a really hard hitting question for both of <laughs> So we'll start with Sydney. So Sydney, if you could only pick one of the shoes, black or white, which version of the design would you pick to rock and wear? Uh, this year, I chose the black shoe. 
Um, I often go for our men's styles. I just go down a size and a half for my women's size and they fit just fine, just a little roomy. Uh, and yeah, black is my favorite color. I love it. It's great. You can't go wrong. Noel, what about <laughs> you? I mean, what is yours? You worked on both of these shoes. Which one do you have a preference, black or white? You know what's funny? I, I love both of them equally. Um, and definitely like the white shoe, I, I like for a visual standpoint, like, but I am a puddle jumper. Um, <laughs> and I don't think I can keep a white shoe white, uh, at, at least on a run. If it's uh, for showcase purposes only, I would choose the white. But uh, I think I'd also have to say black, uh, just out of my own kind of uh, uh, trail runs and the like being thrown into the mix again can't go wrong it's beautiful <laughs> I gotta say though I would go white like I I kind of take it as like a point of pride to like go yeah. out and get my white shoes dirty like mm -hmm. we're runners of steel here in Pittsburgh like let's dirty them up and show them out so yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the white I think it is just so fresh and so great yeah no a bit of grime is always a fun badge of that was a good run <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, that, I mean, believe it or not, that's the end of our questions. We have gone behind the scenes of the Pittsburgh launch eight. So I'm going to plug this for everybody who's tuning in right now. So the shoes, the Pittsburgh launch eights by Brooks running are available now at all Pittsburgh Dick Sporting Goods locations and online at DickSportingGoods.com. So please check them out again, available in black and white this year. And then Sydney and Noel, I just want to thank you both one last time for your partnership and your amazing work on these shoes and for taking us behind the scenes today. So thanks for doing this. It has been really wonderful. So thank you. Thanks so much for having us. So fun. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. You guys are the best. So uh, we're going to wrap up here um, and I hope everybody has a chance to go for a good run today or something like that. <laughs>